Hi everyone uh, and welcome to the very first event of our Hot Skills series. So the Hot Skills series is organized on the event uh, of the Back to School campaign. The Back to School campaign, which is organized in partnership between the STEMIT Career Advisors Network, the STEM Alliance and their industry partners, and Scientix. During the Hot Skills webinar, you learn about the STEM jobs of the future, of course, you'll learn about the people who will create them and the companies who will create them. And of course, you'll get insight on the skills you need to teach your students or encourage your students to get if they are going to get those jobs of the future. My name is Eddie Grenmeyer and I am a pedagogical officer and project officer for European Schoolnet. I'm also the coordinator of the um, the Career Advisors Network and I co organize the Back to School campaign as well. It's my great pleasure to be your host tonight. With me, we have Rocio Benito and Chanel Martinez. Um, both of them are from European Schoolnet and they'll be on hand if you have any need for technical assistance. So if you need anything, if you have any problems with uh, the chat or connecting to anything or hearing anything, do ask them uh, in person in the chat and they will help to the best of their ability. So. A few housekeeping rules for those of you who connected a little bit before time or on time, uh, you'll have heard that already, but there is a signatures list for you to sign. The signatures list is in the chat and my colleagues will share the link again and again for you to access it. It is mandatory for us to prove that this event has happened and it is an obligation for you to sign it if you want to receive a certificate of attendance for this webinar. So go to the chat, take a second, it will only take a moment, and make sure that you uh, sign the signatures list. At the end of the webinar, we'll also share a feedback form. Uh, we really appreciate your feedback on the event. Uh, it's very important for us so we can improve our future event. So you'll get the link uh, at the end in the chat and you'll also get the link when you receive your certificate. So please, again, take a second to help us improve uh, our doing. The webinar is recorded and it will be shared on YouTube. So your cameras and your microphones are off. Now, that means that we still want to ask questions from you to our speakers. So share your questions in the chat and we will relay them as they come or at the end of the event. Now, straight to business. We are very pleased to welcome two representatives from Lenovo. Uh, Lenovo is a premium partner of the STEM Alliance and a leader in the field of personal computing, business solutions and technological innovation with the world's widest portfolio of technology product. We have with us Marine Rabera, Lenovo's Europe, Middle East and Africa Education Segment Director. And we have Valerio Rizzo, the EMEA Artificial Intelligence Leader and Solutions Architect for Lenovo. Welcome to you both. Thank you very much for joining. How are you? You're muted, Valerio. Um, well, um, very good. Um, <laughs> it was a pretty intense day. Just fine, I finalized uh, like a um, presentation that ran a little bit over time, uh, but now I'm here, so I'm right. Right on time, Valerio. Right on time. <laughs> right on time, and life is an adventure, so might as well yeah. just go for it. Cool, so today uh, in our webinar, in the next hour or so, Marine and Valerio will share their journey in the IT industry and they'll answer the following questions. Are they doing the job they were planning to do? What led them to this job? If they have advice for uh, teachers and for students to get to their job and to get to good jobs of the future, and how diversity added value to their current work. But uh, before we learn a little bit more about yourselves, can one of you tell us a little bit more about Lenovo itself? 
Um, yes, I don't know. Yeah, I will give you just a uh, quick information uh, about the Lenovo uh, company. Uh, Lenovo, it's a very big company. It's a uh, it's an, yeah, yeah. headquarters all, all around the world in uh, in uh, four specific strategic geos. Uh, one is in Morrisville. We have an headquarter here in Stuttgart. We have uh, another headquarter in Taipei and one in Beijing. So we we are we call over basically the most of the uh, of the the the, the uh, you know markets in the world and we are really like uh, we really um, are really good we are one of the most unique uh, IT provider in the world um, because we uh, can supply any sorts of uh, technological infrastructure um, uh, and device component for any kind of solution you want to build from uh, from uh, very uh, smart devices such as uh, uh, augmented reality goggles or uh, you know like mobile uh, to to PC advanced, uh, you know, workstation for, uh, uh, you know, visualization project, uh, architectural project, or AI. Uh, in particular, uh, this is mostly like my field of interest. And and plus, we go up to the uh, the data center world, the cloud provide uh, cloud providers, and. Um, and we are really good at what we do. Um, we provide, we have a very strong supply chain. We uh, we build three devices uh, every second um, from uh, data center to PCs. Uh, we we have a broad array of channel partners, and uh, and we prime like we demonstrated the, the value of our of our uh, you know system uh, also in uh, you know like top notch competition such as the top 500. The Defined uh, the world fastest and um, uh, and uh, and more efficient supercomputer in the world. Um, and uh, besides that, uh, we have uh, uh, also a department, the Lenovo uh, and the research lab that does uh, research for advanced technology and cutting edge, uh, you know, scientific uh, uh, implementation of technology. And we develop, we start to develop uh, uh, software uh, that allows to, you know, uh, to easy uh, and, uh, and to decrease the, the steep um, the learning curve for uh, you know accessing certain complex technologies such as the um, high performance computing, etc. And uh, maybe I will talk a little bit more uh, in the in the next slide about that. Um, if you want to add something more, Mary, uh, Marina, like feel free. No, uh, well, thanks a lot, uh, Valerie. You, you did it uh, very well. I was uh, simply thinking that maybe you, as we have teachers on, on the phone, um, maybe you you have been working with some of our devices uh, because obviously you know education for us, um, you know, is a, is a, is a you know existing customers. So we are selling selling a lot to different. Uh, uh, grades of, uh, of education from, you know, primary school uh, up to, uh, to high ed, uh, high education, I mean. Um, so you may know us from, from uh, your own uh, uh, professional environment, who knows? So I hope, I hope so. Great, thank you both. Uh, essentially, Lenovo is the provider, the reason why we get such exciting opportunity in education, uh, looking at new technologies and how to integrate them in the classroom. So we owe a lot to you and to the work that you both do. Uh, all right, so now that we know a little bit more about Lenovo, um, let's talk about you, about the both of you. Can you tell us a little bit more about your current jobs and whether or not they were the jobs you were preparing for and planning to get when you were studying? So uh, who wants to go first? Valerio, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think like my uh, my route, my path uh, um, into Lenovo was a, re a little bit convoluted, um, but uh, and actually I started as a, uh, I'm a biologist. Uh, besides everybody, uh, when when talking with me, like everybody assumed that I'm an engineer. Um, I come from biology. I had like an education in uh, neuroscience, and I did like a neurophysiology for most of my life and and actually I, in that picture you would see me like 11 years ago 
uh, in, uh, in the, the Scripps Institute, where I was actually working with giant slugs uh, called Aplysia. We were studying the electrical activity and the way they were aging. And uh, by means of those animal models, so we can uh, understand how, like, um, how we age and how to uh, maybe stop aging or uh, find the cure for many diseases. So I worked mainly uh, in the neurophysiology and uh, back then, back then, like we were using like already, like when you analyze electrical data, you use a lot of IT resources. So you use, uh, uh, I mean, you do a lot of data science. So you do uh, a lot of you handle big data such as uh, electrophysiological activities of neurons, and you know. Uh, in every field, the most of the time you have to be driven by curiosity. And I was always curious and I was always passionate about technology. I started with my first uh, PC when I was four years old and my father was teaching me a little bit of coding. So I was always, uh, I wanted to always to merge uh, like the field of IT with uh, the research in uh, in life science and biology. I, I ended up exploring a lot of uh, you know different uh, um, approach either to uh, biological analysis, biological data analysis, and also to technological advancement, such as for example, virtual reality was one of the latest technology that I tried to apply to to neuroscience to study for example memory impairment or or how we perceive the the, the environment around us and so i'm starting from that as a, as a curiosity as a passion as a tool that you you might use to make a better research to explore even more certain field of of biology i ended up being uh, an expert in technology uh, and eventually i made my way uh, to to lenovo and now like i'm i'm leading i'm the head of ai for the uh, for the mia region i lead the business development and uh, the technical uh, you know the technical consultancy for uh, my team in uh, in EMEA and this is uh, and this is basically this give me the opportunity uh, to explore uh, the IT world but at the same time to uh, you know uh, keep the relationship uh, still keep the relationship with some the reality where I came from so from the, with the research institution educational institution but also with uh, you know sp startup doing a lot of research research and development. So it's a very, uh, you know, exciting environment. What about you, Maureen? So about me, uh, so basically, you you, you know, I, I was copying Valerio trying to find two different pictures of, uh, you know, when did I start joining uh, IT? And for me, that was uh, 20 years ago. And the reason why we wanted to put those, you know, two pictures uh, for, for the two of us is because none of us, you know, we we were um, uh, planning or supposing to enter uh, the IT, if we look at where we started. For myself, you know, uh, the way I enter IT is just because I was at, in my business school. I was more looking for, uh, you know, uh, a company like in, you know, in marketing, in the luxury industry, whatever. But somehow, you know, there was an opportunity at IBM at the time. Uh, and, you know, they were proposing uh, uh, an apprenticeship. So that was, you know, uh, somehow by um, coincidence that I enter uh, the IT business and somehow would it, if, if I may, you know, would it be my, uh, the way I entered IT or the way Valerio entered, I think it's, it, it just illustrates what we, you know, the, the tagline we, we chosen uh, for, for this webinar, which was get ready for the unknown, because there is different way for, for your uh, uh, pupils, uh, your students, you know, to, to enter IT, maybe they, they, they would not even think about it uh, and probably and maybe they will even don't do study which you know is uh, is appropriate or that we could think about for IT but somehow it may still lead them to IT so I think they should be um, they should be open to it like we have been uh, Valerio and myself and uh, and for good because I think we are all super super happy with the the you know the career that uh, that we have in IT so I think that was uh, the message showing that we were not planning to be there somehow. Maybe your your student doesn't plan either, but uh, who knows? Uh, and and they should be yeah open to it because there is a lot of opportunity in IT. Uh, 
And also, uh, if I may add something a little bit more, I guess that this brings a lot of value to and a lot of advantages also to the company you end uh, you end uh, up with uh, because you bring a different standpoint. Or you you bring different angle uh, when approaching certain problems. So you diversify, and we are talking about diversification and inclusion in the company. You diversify uh, the kind of uh, you know. Uh, uh, ideas that you that uh, leaps within the companies to create something new, and this is something that happens every day in my uh, in my role. So uh, I can give you an example. Uh, recently, like we were discussing with our dev team, uh, developing a tool for AI, and uh, and we were discussing. I bring this, uh, you know, this tool that I was using in my lab every day was an imaging tool uh, made for uh, biological imaging and medical imaging, and they didn't know about this tool and they were like yeah th this is so cool like we don't have any expertise in medical like uh, or in medical imaging or biological imaging so we don't know that we can actually use our tool to also make this kind of workflow and this is something that comes from the fact that i have a completely different background from what an engineer might have so and the same thing apply with uh, for marine like she brings her idea in into an it world that is completely different from uh, what the uh, was the air education, but nevertheless, air education might help the company to, you know, might give new fuel to the company to make new, uh, to develop new ideas or to solve certain problems. Right. Thank you both. So it turns out that sometimes uh, the right job finds you and you don't find the right job. Um, so these are very exciting, uh, exciting jobs, and you've had very exciting careers. And and whether it is the the, the journey that's taken you uh, to Lenovo, uh, or that you may have had before, um, but how did you get there? Then how did you get to uh, Lenovo? How did you decide that you know Lenovo was was or IT really uh, was something that you could work with? Um, I I think like I already probably mentioned the fact that I. I'm very curious um, and I like to uh, even if I know something, uh, the curiosity brings me something new, uh, new technology, a new piece of information and a new, uh, you know, discovery in the research field. I like to to test it. I like to have my hands dirty and test it out. And so technology gives you this opportunity to uh, apply tools as a uh, as we were doing like since the dawn of time, right? Like we take rocks and we take sticks and we try to to make something new to solve the, our daily problem. And in, like in, in research, you have many problems to solve uh, from data analysis, data destruction, like you have uh, your plenty of uh, questions and challenges that you have to solve. And I had always had this this curiosity to explore new tools to solve those problems, to use it, to 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 understand the limitation, to understand what is the potential beyond what is uh, obvious. And and this is like uh, this like overall this last part, thinking outside the box, like thinking. Um, outside the obvious uh, and, and so and always be creative like really it's the mindset of the of a child right like you have to be curious you have to ask why 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 you have to have your hands dirty you have to play with whatever you have and dream all the time uh, everything is possible as long as you can uh, as you can imagine so that is my that is the way i i usually think and this is what brings me here. I yeah, think. and and I fully align with the uh, with uh, what you say about uh, the creativity, uh, Valerio. So if I answer for myself, uh, so I've been working for Lenovo for twenty years. So that's a lot. Well, almost twenty. Um, so you can imagine that you, you can think that you know it's pretty boring to stay in a company for twenty years, but um, but I would obviously answer to you that it is not. Um, uh, when I look at my career, I've been moving probably every, in average, every uh, three or four years, every time, you know, getting new challenges uh, and having new opportunities. Um, and, and, uh, and I would say that it has been possible because, first of all, a little bit like uh, what Valerio said, I was not, you know, myself uh, uh, 
so much IT driven. So I, I, I had to learn a lot. And, and I think it was the, 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 the right um, uh, habit to take from the very beginning. Keep learning, keep, keep being you know, open to, to what is happening. And, and, and I want to emphasize the fact that more specifically in IT, and that's maybe a takeaway for, uh, for you as, as a career advisor, is that in IT there is a, uh, obviously a lot of innovation. So the, the, what is true five years ago may not be currently. So, so it means that we, we need to, to be very uh, curious, coming back to what you said, Valerio, uh, uh, very open to keep learning because you will, anyone who have a, a career in IT keep, have to keep learning. So for anyone who like it, who like, you know, to, to, to evolve, uh, in it, this, is, this is the appropriate uh, industry because you, it's very demanding in, in terms of um, um, uh, Brain exercise somehow, so you need to keep, you know, being the super, super uh, uh, up to date and uh, and uh, and uh, and keep learning. So that that's one, uh, which is obviously for me a beauty of this uh, sector. And then you know, also coming back to what you said, Valerio, when it comes when I when I think about my career, I also see that uh, in IT, you know, innovation is welcome because IT is innovation. So any any um, um, any idea or, or even initiative that you would like to take will probably be welcome as well. And that will not only uh, bring value to the company, but it will also uh, bring value to you because going, doing things out of your role or, you know, thinking about some new initiative that, that you can take uh, is also a way for, for, for you to learn. And, and I would say that uh, to learn and to grow. Uh, and I would say that uh, fortunately in IT, this is pretty welcome to have this type of uh, initiative and, and, you know, be a, a bit um, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial, excuse me for the, the word. So, this is so, a hard word in English. With yes, it French. is. Uh, so, <laughs> so that is fantastic. Uh, the, the, in English with the, the French pronunciation, it was lovely. <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. thanks for that. So, so anyway, so that's the way I, you know, I, uh, I, I took my career by, you know, always um, even, you know, proposing things which was outside of my scope, but I think it's exactly what is expected in IT. And that is a way for, for anyone in IT, but that was the case for me more specifically, to get new challenges and to get promoted and to get new jobs and, you know, to grow in, the, in, in this industry. Um, and, um, and of course, you know, I think the reason why I've been also able to, to grow in the company and, and have a role like uh, I have today is, is also because I, um, I was uh, gaining confidence over time. So this is something that any student which, uh, who will be entering this, uh, this industry will, we need to gain. We, we are not always super comfortable at the very beginning, but, but, but I think you know, by you know, having some uh, initiative and see that those initiatives drive success, give you confidence, which gives you, you know, the opportunity to grow even uh, even further. And um, um, if, if there is one thing that I would like to share with with you and with your students um, uh, in IT, and maybe even more specifically in the business, because I'm, you know, I'm I'm in the business more than the engineering part. Um, I always uh, I've always been led by the opti optimism. Uh, so I think you need to uh, keeping this. Um, I don't know, maybe Valerie, you would call it, uh, you know, the the you said you were referring to the curiosity of a child and everything. So I, I would, on my side, talk about uh, optimism and, and, and think about uh, the positive uh, outcome of anything that you would uh, be um, uh, doing. And that has also led my, uh, my, uh, my career and probably why I'm, I'm having this, this type of, the, uh, of job now. That's excellent. Thank you very much. You've both mentioned, um, obviously, that so you, you started in a place that's very different from the from where you are now. Uh, Valeria, you were in neuroscience and Marine, you, you were in business school. Um, now, you've both moved towards uh, technology and um, IT. Now, these are IT is a very technical, uh, as you say, you know, you need to have a sort of engineering knowledge and, and quite be um, technically proficient. Did you upskill? Did you relearn? Did you back to school or did you learn on the job? I think that's a, that's one of the questions that came in the chat as well. I guess in my uh, experience is like a mixture of both, like you leverage your own knowledge uh, and then you learn always something new on the job and then you have to 
uh, you know, also find out your own sources of uh, of new knowledge because sometimes it's like what what you the knowledge available on the job you are doing uh, is not enough, and so people might um, might uh, you know. Uh, might look at you as a as a point of reference to provide certain information or to be able to find those information. So, for example, something that I uh, that I do very often uh, in my my uh, I mean in my role is to uh, to actually explore a scientific literature uh, regarding certain uh, you know challenges in uh, in AI or certain way to solve a given problem, and so the ability to like the skills that you build uh, for example in my case during my phd and during my research to find uh, uh, relevant uh, uh, you know publication or uh, you know the relevant source of information for that particular problem it's a skill that you can leverage to provide information to your peers and to you know help them in their in their job so it's a mixture of everything. You learn from them, they learn from you, you apply something you know already. Um, I would uh, I would give a, a very different answer because I'm not you know working on the on the uh, development part so much less than than Valerio. I'm I'm working on the on the business part. So to answer your question, Eddie, I think um, you don't you don't have to be super technical to work in IT. Uh, there is technic uh, technical people, engineer, development, and there is other people. So, like me, <laughs> and uh, and uh, <laughs> other people working for HR, working so human resources, working for marketing, working for sales, working for um, uh, social and environmental affairs. So, uh, in IT, like in uh, many uh, industry, there is a plenty of job. So, so maybe you know some of uh, your students uh, may not have you know um, appetite for 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 STEM or you know maybe a limited appetite. It does not mean uh, that uh, they cannot have a career in IT, where you know obviously they will have to learn minimum of uh, you know what is the product you are selling, obviously, and you need to get this. But you gain it from you know internal training. Like any company, you know, people explain to you what this is about and you are supported uh, to to learn. Um, but at a certain point of time, you know, a certain level, excuse me. So I don't if, if I talk for myself, obviously I needed to 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 be curious to learn uh, on, on, on the on the IT, which and I was far from knowing anything about IT when I when I joined, I have to admit. Um, so you need to be to be comfortable with what uh, you know your company is doing, uh, but you know until a certain you know level. So my message would be that in the IT industry, uh, even even if your your students may uh, consider working in IT, even if they don't have a super super strong STEM uh, capability or a, a very strong appetite for for engineering uh, and mathematics, whatever. So. So um, there is place for everyone, and then you know we learn what you need to learn to do your job good, well. You know in in the job. Um, so when I um, refer to myself, I didn't have to go to you know external course uh, class. You know as you you were asking Eddie, uh, I, I really learned in the company. Um, so yeah. So there's plenty of different ways of of learning. Uh, and of knowing what you need to do, uh, what you need to know to do your job well. Thank you both of you for these answers. Um, so next, let's talk about students and, and what your advice for students and for their teachers and the career advisors that will help them uh, find their uh, ways in the future. What's your advice? What are in, in your fields or I guess in general in IT and in business, uh, what are the skills to consider? What what would your advice be? Um, so I listed here some of the bullet points because everybody is like this is mainly related to my my role and my you know my background and uh, I thought there was uh, something that I 
I feel like uh, to to advise, like uh, to to take in consideration as an advice. So everybody's talking about being data driven, for example, and uh, being data driven is fine. Like uh, you, uh, absolutely, you have to take into consideration data. But uh, I mean, not data addicted. Uh, this is something our brain uh, most of the time. They uh, like there are uh, some research saying that we have a Bayesian brain. So and we live in, in the Bayesian world. So many information are not given. Uh, you have to learn yourself how to use the data provided the, the data that you have, uh, and you have to also to be, um, you know, to improve that skills to to let you do the best guessing and be self confident, be confident enough and take uh, accountability and responsibility uh, for uh, the decision you take. So this is the first advice. So it's always taking consideration data, always refer to data to to take your decision, but not be completely, um, you know, don't don't feel lost if you don't have data source or if you don't have the full picture, uh, because sometimes you might not have it. Um, being like we are in uh, in an era that where technology is part uh, like it's a it's a fundamental part of our daily life. I mean, at any ages, like you know, like we use smartphone, we are surrounded by sensor, by sensors, and so forth. So. And just like any other tool, technology is a tool. So there's no evil or good technology, it's just the way we use it. So uh, it's important to understand the technology, the thread, the limitation, the weakness, the, the, the potentials to use it. Like it's very important, but not being technological dependent, like not being addicted to technology, being able to live your daily life uh, Taking consideration the uh, you know the the amount of information you can handle uh, because there is so much information that the human brain cannot handle uh, and so be wise about that like use the technology but use it wisely um, and last but not least uh, the ability to communicate this is very important regardless your your role in an IT company uh, what Marine was saying is completely true that you might not be a technician or you might not be in a technical role. Uh, nevertheless, if you are, you have to have the ability to communicate with the other, to make like a teamwork, and that is all about communication. Uh, and so that is part of the message I wanted to include in that short sentence. So being able to communicate, but also being able to communicate with machine, learn at least the coding language. This is the new, um, you know, it's a mandatory skill, I guess, for everybody uh, in 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 our year to be able to, uh, you know, speak the the machine languages. So learn a programming languages, either for understanding the logic and the mechanism behind the machine, but also as a uh, really as a tool that you can use in your daily life because you will see more and more uh, tools that make use of code or at least, uh, you know, uh, even visual code. So code logic to to make something working. And, and it's really fun at the end of the day. So uh, I started very young, so probably that is why like I, I like it so much, but um, you know, once you start, uh, it's uh, it's really. I mean, it's a. Uh, after I say, you don't have to be dependent, but it's really addictive. It's really funny to play with uh, being able to tell the machine what to do. And nowadays, you have a lot of programming language that are really like very close to human language. So you can have a lot of fun to you know create your own tools, your own, uh, you know, programs or application to uh, also to solve some of the, you know, little duties that you have in your daily life. So it sounds like you you speak machine fluently. Yeah, I like to do that. I like to do that. I think that logic it applies to anything, even if you're not into coding, uh, although you make a very good case that coding is important, uh, even understanding how a simple software, how, you know, a, a text word works, uh, you need to understand the logic for it. Marine, what about you? What are your, what is your advice? So I was thinking about uh, two, two, two aspects. 
as I said, you know, uh, we don't always uh, plan, you know, for, for, for the next step and, and, and the skills also that will be needed. So probably uh, you need to be um, to, to accept that you you don't know yet the skill that you will uh, you will need moving forward. Um, and you may discover uh, them, you know, by doing some 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 job. Uh, so so then you need to also be flexible. And, you know, if um, something is uh, required from you and you may or, you know, there is an opportunity for you uh, and you may not know everything or you may not have all the skills that, you know, you 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 are ready to to learn and maybe um, uh, Get those skills uh, moving forward. So, so you need to to stay flexible and and accept that you don't master everything and that you you, you cannot plan everything. And I just uh, wanted to illustrate this um, based on a, an experience I had, um, not for this job but the job I had before. So I was um, so even before that, you know, I was a sales manager. So I had a team of uh, salespeople, uh, you know, selling for for big customers. And uh, that was, you know, pretty easy. You know, I, you know, it was really business oriented. So it was all about the numbers, the achievements and, you know, serving our customers and be close to our customers. So the, the skill was really, you know, relationship with customer and, you know, being data driven, even not uh, data addicted. So, so that was pretty clear. So, and I was, I was, um, I, I had the skills. Uh, for that. And then, you know, I moved uh, to another job, which was uh, not um, a, a sales job anymore. So I was more, you know, uh, uh, leading some strategic initiative uh, at EMEA level, so Europe, Middle East, Africa. So it was much more, you know, strategic. And then I got lost. At the beginning, I said, where do I start? What do I do? And even my mind was not ready for that because, you know, I was, I was until now very tactical. So I had, you know, to be very reactive, you know, very... Uh, um, uh, down to earth, you know, with the relations with my customer. And then I was asked to be, to plan. I was asked to have a vision. And even my brain, you know, was not, didn't know how to make it. So I had to stretch myself and for, for good. And then, you know, I, I, I realized that I'm able to develop some, some, uh, some of those skills and that my, my, my mind was just uh, needed to be, you know, re- uh, Readapted to this, um, so which is which is super good. And then I only after you know I did this job for for two years, I realized that how much uh, how many skills I, I've been developing that I didn't have before. So just because I changed role, which where you know I was not expected to do the same type of things, then I realized that uh, I, I developed so much that I could I could not even you know um, envision before I, I started the job. So. Um, so that would be one, you know, takeaway from from this experience, and um, and uh, reason why again, you know, I I stick to the to to the to the the the, the title we give to this uh, to this session to get to get ready for the unknown because you will also, uh, you know, you don't always you cannot always anticipate the skill that you will need, so you just need to be. To be ready for it, to accept it, to take the challenge, and to be flexible. So uh, for me, that would be the ultimate, uh, the, the ultimate uh, skills that you need to to uh, to develop. And uh, the second um, thing I wanted to share is also that along the way, you know, uh, during all the career, um, sometimes you, um, you you may feel that you don't have all the skills. And um, but at some point of time. Um, you need to, or I, and your student will 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 need to count on on what they think is true, what what uh, they believe is the right approach, or what they believe is the right way to do it. Maybe it will not always be exactly the right way, but uh, but sometimes we feel like because we don't have the skills, we need to trust on someone else approach, or we need to do the way the other one was doing. And it is, I think, a mistake. So it's not always easy, especially when you are junior and starting in a, in, a, in a job. But you know, trusting your gut feeling on what should be the right way to do things um, is, um, I think, is the right way to to do. You know, being humble and you know, accept you know the advice from others, but also um, um, don't hesitate to bring your 
your own uh, ideas and your own way of doing because you know if everyone is doing like the predecessor was doing then we don't innovate so uh, i think you know one of the skills or i don't know if we can call a skill but uh, one of the um, approach that i'm proposing is that everyone to trust um, what uh, he or, or she believes is true and what makes sense for uh, for him or her Right. Yes. Thank you. I think you you both embody that um, quite well. That you have got to be you've got to be open. Uh, there's Adeline Adelina uh, who's commented that um, we've got to think outside the box. Uh, we have to stand outside the box, and we've got to um, keep learning throughout the process. Lifelong learning is a is an essential part of progressing, and and I think you both illustrate that keeping an open mind is the only way to do that and to try new exciting things. Um, talking about um, really teaching and and training in general, uh, we were we were just wondering: is there so can can young trainees or or students who want to um, start internships um, can they? How can they decide on additional development course? Uh, who can lead them in the right direction? Is there an initiative in Lenovo um, as advisor for a uh, young personnel who can help um, students explore and learn? So, Valérie, I don't know. If I, I will start, and then you can comment and compliment uh, if if I miss anything. But. Basically, you know, uh, no later than um, last year, we launched a, a major program across EMEA, and that is also true globally, where we are um, welcoming um, people who uh, student, uh, people who just finished their studies, and then you know we um, onboard them for two years in a program where they will be you know moving from uh, different. From different roles, you know, experiencing uh, different areas of you know the job that can have um, that you can have in IT, um, you know, for a few months, or each of each of those roles for a few months. So then, you know, we we lead them through you know what the, the type of career they can have in in IT, and and from there, you know, learn from all the departments they have been they they will be working with um, to develop their skills. So that is a, a concrete example of of the way we. We onboard, you know, the the the, the junior people uh, coming from from the studies or those who uh, who want to apply for an, in, uh, an internship, um, and and, um, uh, and on top of that, uh, obviously we have, uh, you know, like any big company probably, but I think we are doing pretty well in that uh, in that aspect. You know, there is a, a, a real support uh, with training. Um, where you know internally they will be able to develop skills. Uh, would it be you know with classes uh, and courses um, uh, face to face, you know, with a with a, um, with a trainer, but also you know with e-learning. So there is a, a incredible uh, rich catalog of uh, of uh, training that uh, that uh, the student can take. Um, and anyone, by the way, in the company can take uh, over uh, over time. Well, then it sounds like, you know, that was a perfect shoe in. You've got everything teachers uh, and future professionals need. Valerio, was there anything you wanted to add there? Um, well, like we just a little. This was very comprehensive and I have to say like uh, Arim probably knows more than me on this uh, this. Uh, uh, this uh, topic, but uh, we have also just to mention we as a, a Lenovo employee has also internal program uh, that supports their, uh, you know, continuous education. So once you are in Lenovo, uh, you might choose to take, for example, uh, like a bachelor degrees or something like related to the field you are already working in uh, to, you know, to expand your knowledge and or, uh, you know, increase your or, uh, you know, get updated on the news on the new things in uh, in the field you are working in. So there are several programs within Lenovo. It's uh, as I said, it's a huge company that there are a lot of things that you might explore and that uh, increase uh, like the quality of the of the, the work you are doing and the life within the company. So. 
Right. Thanks both for um, sharing that information. I'm sure the teachers and career advisors present in the audience will be very intrigued and we'll go check them out. Uh, now you've you've brought up uh, Marine in your and you've brought up values and a value that's that's very dear uh, is diversity. Uh, and we we were thinking, you know, how did diversity add value to your current work? Should I start first or am I up? Go ahead, go ahead, Valerio. Well, I, but that's basically, I mean, it's all, the diversity has always been the, uh, the main, uh, uh, you know, the pillars of every work that I have done. Like uh, in research, I always work at the, in an international environment, like, and, uh, and it's not just a, a cultural diversity, but it's also like a background diversity in every lab, but you don't, there is no, like when you do uh, very complex research, you have people working in different aspects, having different, uh, you know, skill set and uh, way to think and, uh, you know, like and you have to incorporate all those diversity uh, to make uh, the to to allow your research to succeed. So that is what was, uh, as I said, one of the main pillars of all my working life. So and also about my private life. I, I mean, it's uh, uh, in terms of cultural background, like uh, I I have uh, like a brother Ray. I, I guess I, I I know people from. Uh, the majority of the part of the world. So I, it's beautiful to, you know, also to learn from uh, from people from other cultures and uh, and learn uh, like what you have in common, uh, what uh, like you know what you don't have in common, and uh, and also the history or the culture of another country that you might not know uh, as in person uh, unless you don't you don't hear somebody talking about that so i guess it's beautiful it's like it's really like uh, uh, expanding your horizon expanding your knowledge it's just like everybody like all the that knowledge can be can fill you and uh, and uh, and uh, and you are like the whole world in in a single person so that is uh what happened, and I guess it's it's amazing. Thanks, Valerio. Marin. Um, when it comes uh, to to diversity, um, since the beginning, since uh, I uh, uh, I um, started in my career, I was uh, involved, you know, in those uh, in anything that we can do to promote diversity um, in in the uh, IT industry. I think that is coming from you know my uh, my personal values. You know, I was. Uh, uh, maybe concern or I, I face challenges being uh, being a, a woman in society sometime, uh, but also being uh, being a woman in IT also, which uh, is an is a is a sector where which has been uh, let's say um, uh, with with a high percentage of male. Let's say let's put it that way. So so from the very beginning, you know, I always uh, involved myself in uh, in uh, you know promotion of uh, diversity in the IT industry. You know, for for big, first of all, because it brings you know um, uh, innovation that is uh, essential for me. Uh, also, because you know it's uh, very tied to my value. So I'm coming back to the value uh, you know you were referring to uh, ADP four. So so it's something which is deep deep inside, let's say, and um, and somehow. Um, so I, I hope that you know I've, I've helped you know to bring and promote diversity. But I have to say that you know being involved in diversity was also uh, beneficial for me. So first of all, to comfort myself, you know, to find a role model outside of my management or outside of the people which was uh, who was around me. So it was a way to, you know, to, to have some role model uh, uh, for, for a career in IT. Um, it was um, uh, also a way for me to to be involved in topics which has which was um, which were outside of my role. So I was always deeply involved in my job, but also always deeply involved in other stuff than my job. And I was, uh, you know, uh, learning a lot by, you know, being involved in diversity because I was developing skills that, you know, I was not uh, uh, supposed or I was not able to develop in my usual uh, expected uh, role. Um, and uh, and it also it, it has always uh, be a way also to develop my network. 
uh, internally, externally. So I think when you when you work on a topic like diversity, it feeds you a lot, and uh, and and I hope in return, you know, you are also able to uh, make things uh, change. Um, and maybe just a um, few example. I don't know if we if we have uh, too much time. So Eddie, cut me if uh, you know I'm 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 late. I think we're or, good for now. Okay, we're okay, good. okay. So so just to give uh, some example of uh, the uh, the initiative that I was uh, leading, you know, I've been uh, creating the um, uh, diversity network uh, in Lenovo in France uh, ten years ago. So we are a group of. Uh, uh, 25 people uh, in Lenovo France who are proposing, you know, action around diversity. So not only male and female, you know, um, uh, diversity, but also social social diversity, uh, generation diversity, um, um, sexual orientation diversity. So just to make sure that everyone feels feels good in the company and that they can um, uh, give the best of themselves because you know they see that we value diversity, any type of diversity. So that was very important, and I think uh, we did we did it pretty well. Um, and uh, you know, other type of initiative is around artificial intelligence. Valerio knows it very well. You know, the uh, as we are a company uh, developing artificial intelligence and contributing, you know, in the development of AI. Uh, in uh, in our society, we also need to to make sure that the way we are building AI will not bring or amplify bias that we have in our uh, society, uh, and especially uh, you know um, gender bias, but not only gender bias, uh, bias overall, which may discriminate people uh, over time uh, using AI. So um, uh, I launched some initiative internally, and I think you know we we succeed uh, really to make sure that. Uh, uh, Lenovo and not only Lenovo, you know, other other company uh, in IT pay attention in the way uh, our uh, AI tools are developed and make sure that we don't hit and discriminate uh, people with uh, with AI. So, um, so that would be, you know, a few examples and I, I led some other initiative, but maybe if I need to to conclude, you know, I was preparing one sentence that I, I really want to, to say <laughs> is that, you know, obviously, um, from what Verario said, from what I said as well, you understand that we, you know, in IT, it's um, it's an industry where we need to innovate. So diversity needs to be in at the at the at the center of uh, of this because it's 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 a way to be innovative by confronting different backgrounds, as Valerio said, different you know perspective. So it's super important that we embrace diversity and we drive inclusion to be to be uh, innovative. But but then I would uh, I would have a specific message for the female student that you may um, talk to and and I and I would be much more concrete, saying that um, uh, IT needs women and women is uh, and, and and IT is is good for women and especially from a financial perspective and uh, you know I'm really down to earth now but in IT uh, you know this is a, a sector where we earn money uh, it's uh, very well pretty well paid uh, industry versus you know other type of uh, industry we have to admit that we need to to promote that and i think you know when it comes to um, social balance uh, the balance in our society uh, we need to promote that to the to, to to girls and saying that you will have good career in it and you will be able to um, to have a good salary which is super important to have you know balance um, uh, society having women who are also earning a lot of money for money and a lot i hope for them as well so it's very concrete i know i'm very down to uh you know to help but i think it's something we need to say uh, especially to the girls yes well i think there's nothing wrong uh you know about about saying that there is yeah. money and that these are well-paying jobs stem stem jobs in general tend to be well-paying and I, it is definitely one of those uh thank you very much both of you for sharing your stories you've you've brought up uh, and i had a final question um you've brought up uh role models uh and i was wondering because that's part of the reason why we're showcasing your stories today because of course both of you become role models and 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 de facto mentors uh for the younger generation did you have a role model growing up or or you know getting into study or or did you have a mentor hmm. question uh i mean i i think i had several mentors in my life if i have to think about uh one special person 
was my thesis uh, tutor um, at the university, uh, which um, that was uh, actually, um, she was uh, my professor of neurophysiology. Unfortunately, she passed away, but I guess one of the main lessons she gave me is about having passion, deep passion in whatever you do, and uh, like, and use that passion to, um, to you know, um, solve any challenge and go beyond the, like a roadblocks in your life. Uh, so that's it. I think that was my, my best example. I think that's a pretty good one. What about you, Marine? Did you have a mentor or a role model? So, um, yeah, I was I was always trying to to find you know people in especially in the company who could uh, you know discuss with me and and uh, give me their perspective. So I was always uh, I, I've never been shy to ask you know to some leaders to to mentor me and give me some feedback. Um, and coming back to what I said previously, sometimes I couldn't find those role models around me. So being so much involved in diversity, you know, I was developing a, a networking where I could find those role models, especially women role models, which sometimes you need also, you know, to, to, to project yourself in a, in, in, in a future you. <laughs> so, uh, so that was a way also for me to gain a role model in, in different companies. And, and maybe more recently, you know, um, um, in France, we had uh, so the, the, the woman who was uh, leading uh, Lenovo France, um, uh, a few years ago, she became a minister in France. So obviously, you know what, you know that that was pretty amazing. So when when you see this type of career, said everything is possible, isn't it? So that was probably a good example of, let's do it. You know, don't be shy. Let's go, <laughs> and and we'll make it. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. The the um. The glass ceiling is shattered, and uh, you know, always, always read for the star. Uh, thank you very much for both of you. Uh, it's been it's been very exciting to have you both, and and you have uh, officially become role models and mentors. I think today. Happy um, to. <laughs> unfortunately, that's going to be us for today. All good things must come to an end. Uh, but I'd like to remind everyone uh, about the upcoming event in the Back to School campaigns that there are more exciting webinars coming up uh, with new role models, other role models. So uh, check out the link and go register for the upcoming event. Uh, if you want to, or if you're very interested in career, as I believe you would be since you joined this event, uh, you can also check out the latest episode of Scientix TV. It's a special episode on careers. We've got career advisors as part of the Career Advisors Network uh, who are sharing their experience about how to organize um, activities with professionals. We've got advice from ministry and advice from GSMA um, who's leading an educational um, activity as well on how to promote careers. So check it out, share it and use the hashtag Scientix TV. Now, thank you very much uh, to both of you, Marine and Valerio, for coming thank and you. sharing your journeys with us today. Uh, it's been very, very cool, and I'm sure that everyone has enjoyed it and, and hearing about your stories as much as I have and as much as we have uh, at European School Met. Uh, one final reminder for everyone, this is your last chance to sign the signatures list if you want a certificate. So click on the link in the chat go sign the signatures list and you will receive a certificate and the link for the feedback form. Thank you again, both of you. Thank you to everyone who's attended tonight. It's been a really, really cool event. This is the first event of the Back to School campaign, so we will see you next time. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Bye-bye.